This series of podcasts on the Pentateuch has um, reached number five, which is all about the book of Deuteronomy, the last book in the Pentateuch of the Bible. Deuteronomy literally means second law, and it's named because the law is repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, especially, of course, the Ten Commandments, which are kind of the central kernel of all of the divine instruction, repeated in chapter 5. But uh, it really is a repeat of almost all of the Torah, the divine instruction, that God has given in the earlier books. Um, The setting is that Moses is now a very old man. He's very close to death, and he gathers the people of Israel together for one last sermon before he leaves them. And in that sermon, he reminds them of where they've come from, all the things that they've experienced, and what God has done for them. And then in that context, he repeats the things that God has taught and uh, causes them to be reminded of all of the things that make up the Torah, the divine instruction of God. In this context, it's very interesting, uh, just as an example of the kind of teaching that you find here, to look at chapter 6 of Deuteronomy, uh, where you find a central part of Jewish theology called the Shema. Um, Good Jews would repeat this over and over again. This is kind of like the central statement of Judaism. You know, like with Islam, it's, um, you know, there's one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Well, you know, the Shema is sort of the central kernel of Judaism. And it goes like this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Sound familiar? Jesus wasn't making it up from scratch. In fact, if you remember the story in the New Testament, a man came to Jesus and asked him, which is the greatest of all the laws, all the commandments? And Jesus said, "Um, well, uh, what do you think? How do you read it? And he said, I think the greatest one is, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. And Jesus said, you're right. That's it. That's it. That's the greatest. And this is where it comes from, of course, from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And it goes on. And these words that I, meaning Moses or God, command you today shall be on your heart. I mean, Moses speaking for God and Moses recording this in, on pen and ink on behalf of God. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Just as an aside, um, Jews took this literally and the Pharisees... um, took these words, wrote them on small pieces of paper, and inserted them into little boxes, and then bound those boxes with leather ties to their hands, uh, wrists, and uh, around their foreheads so that they would dangle in front of their eyes as a literal way of literally keeping the statement that you shall bind them as a sign in your hand that shall be as frontless between your eyes. You probably have noticed uh, that many Jews, when they go in or out of their house, will touch and kiss uh, a little thing on the doorpost of their front door. And um, this is a ritual in many Jewish homes, even today. And that little thing is a little box-like that contains, again, these words of Scripture. And uh, they are put there by the door, on the doorpost of the house uh, in fulfillment of God's admonition here to do this and uh, as a way of remembering that this is the foundational theology of Israel. At the end of Deuteronomy, Moses goes up the mountain, and from the top of the mountain he looks over towards the Promised Land, and then he dies. Uh, It comes as a surprise, I suppose, to many people that Moses never sets foot in the Promised Land. He lives uh, most of his life, a good share of his life in Egypt, and the other half of his life he lives in the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. I think there is a story here, I mean a lesson in the story, and that is that there are people who never get to taste the reward that, are, that is promised to God's people. They, they leave sin behind, 
you know, the land of bondage. And uh, they set out for the land of God's glory, um, the land of plenty, but they, they never get there in this life. They spend their whole life traveling, but they don't arrive. That, in fact, most people have that experience. And uh, Moses is kind of their patron saint, in a way. Moses dies without entering the promised land. After 40 years of faithful service leading the people there, uh, he dies on the border. And it's left to Joshua, who is Moses' second in command, a somewhat younger man, to take over after Moses' death and lead the people into the promised land, the land that was promised to their forefather Abraham, the land that was their inheritance according to the covenant, and to help them establish that land and uh, fight the battles that are going to be necessary in order to uh, subdue the land and conquer the people who have taken it over during their absence for 400 and some years in Egyptian slavery. It's, it's an exciting story. It's filled with a lot of drama and a lot of pathos. Um, and, uh, and as you've heard many, many times, um, the Bible story is primarily just that, a story. The Bible is a story book. And we are supposed to meet God in the stories and uh, know him through the stories and knowing him, love him and loving him, trust him and trusting him, obey him and serve him. And that is the point of all of this, uh, if we only get the point. So that's kind of a summary of the Pentateuch. The first five books of the Bible will go on from here in future podcasts.